Woohoo! It's another movie review! Are you so excited? I'm so excited. I'm also so tired. I have so many movie reviews. There's not enough of me. I need clones. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to these messy little film reviews. This one is Beach Bum. Oh my god, my boyfriend loves this movie. And I hate that about him. Um, I hate anybody who loves this movie. Um, that's not fair. You're allowed to love whatever movie you want to love. I'm not that judgy. I just, and it's, it's hard because it's, it's not a bad film, right? This is a, it's a good film. He made Spring Breakers and then he went on and, and he made this and it's, it's great. I should also get used to saying names. I'm sorry I've been so bad at saying names of people and I just go to pronouns. All wishy-washy. Let me look up this director's name because I'm not that smart to just know it off the top of my head. How dare I? I should be. A better fan. I'm not, he's like not the type to cast me at all because he likes to cast super pretty people. Harmony Corin did this movie. Anyway, Harmony Corin, he's made Spring Breakers as well. I definitely think Beach Bum is better developed than Spring Breakers. It's very, very good. Oh, he's from Tennessee and New York. He's had a lot of success, but he's got a style. I will say he's very artistic and I, I do, I do respectfully, resignedly respect him, I guess. Resignedly. Can I talk while I have a microphone? Can I speak proper, proper English? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe someday I will. Anyway, whole Matthew McConaughey. A great role for him, honestly. Very great role. He always gets one star into just an absolute shithole of a person role. It was like James Franco in Spring Breakers, which I'll talk more about on Mouthy because that falls into that jurisdiction. And this is an adult movie. This belongs on the YouTube channel. Not that you can't listen to my podcast on YouTube because, I don't know, just making it easier for you guys. Anyway, so I hate this Beach Bum's creepy laugh. I also must admit that he reminded me so much of my ex who abused me and lived off of me. So I did like though, I did like his, he's got a great shirt. So many good Hawaiian shirts that just go under underappreciated in my mind. Then there's this white kitty, which are my favorite kind of kitties for my aunt. She loves white kitties. Those are her favorite kind of kitties. And my aunt's usually like one of my only listeners here, which is going to be a great segue to this conversation where they talk about angel pussy. And it's very interesting being a non-binary, how much that I respect pussy and just like appreciate having one. I think I would be an absolute monster with a dick. Um, I would have way too much power and probably be more rich and successful than I am now. But they say angel pussy. And I just like, I like the phrase, honestly. I mean, there's so many bad pickup lines, but... I think Angel Pussy should stay around, you know? Anyway, he just goes up on stage with a cat, which is brilliant. Uh, I would like to bring more cats on stage. I actually have a whole comedy routine based on my cat, Milo, and I going on stage. And it's it's pretty insane. So it's Key West, Florida. I've never been. My grandma talks about it all the time. My aunt and uncle have this story where they're trying to find Key Lime Pie in Key West where it was made and they couldn't find it. This man puts beer in milk, which sounds awful, but might be good. Then he talks about his dick being inside of the cat, which is super gross, and I don't know why I wanted to bring it up. I guess I just wanted everyone to feel as traumatized as I am. Snake drum, also very reminiscent of my ex. There's beautiful sunset on water. I mean, this guy's cinematography is just, it's so good. The, what, what he does with lighting and these kind of, these films that he's made are just like love stories to Florida and I appreciate it because I I feel like Florida, it gets a bad rap in a lot of ways, but there is like some beautiful things there. There's a reason all your grandparents are going to retire there. The man pees on boats, I hate him, but he likes poetic floor play, which I, you know, I'm a sucker for poetry, so. Anyway, he wants to go back to his pier place and he's high and wearing these weird glasses, uh, great times. Can't recommend getting high appropriately on legal marijuana in a state where marijuana is legal and wearing glasses. He wants to swallow up the world and perish violently. Hard yikes for me. I don't want to do any of those things. There's some more mad respect for Jimmy Buffett. I remember I had like a whole fifth grade class on this one teacher's love for Jimmy Buffett and I don't, I don't really get it. I went to Margaritaville at Universal and it was like all right. It was just like a Florida Applebee's. Anyway, the girls all laugh at this beach bum. And sometimes I hate this because I'm like, I don't feel in real life that anybody would think that 
the way Matthew McConaughey is dressed and looking in this, like, I don't think that anybody would laugh at him. I don't think that girls would. And I, I kind of get bad sometimes at the representation of females of like, oh, we love this old man that no woman would ever love in real life. No one would ever do this. But in this film, oh, they think he's so darling. I, I just like, I hate it. I'm so done. Like, make me a man that a woman would actually laugh at. Not to be a bitter feminist, but I I want a man deserving of laughs in a film. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm just disrespectful to old white guys. I don't know. Not on purpose. I think he calls somebody a ginger goat. Also very reminiscent of my ex. Hey, uh, he was super mean to me though and choked me in my kitchen. So should I call other people names? No, you should always do better than somebody who left you. But it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> Anyway, he kind of just feels you about civilization, which I can kind of agree with. And people think that life would be boring without him. And, and maybe it would. I think he's absolutely toxic as a character. And I guess that's why he annoys me so much because it's it's very hard for me to watch movies where toxic men are characters because I'm like, well, can't I just go outside my living room and partake in that? Like, why would I why waste two hours of my life? I only want to see a toxic male character if he gets killed by an even more toxic female character. That's like, that's what I want. I want them to just eradicate each other with the female reliving and going to prison and then becoming acumen into society. I have no bias at all. What are you talking about? Anyway, he feels at home with the burnouts, which I kind of do too. I and mean, maybe not as much now. Now I feel like I like more driven people, but I definitely was like attracted to losers for a very long time. I was like, what is it like to not want all this success because I feel crippled by the pressure of it. He feels that you have to get low to get high. I think a lot of people feel that. And I, interpretation of that, I mean, you could think like, I feel like when they say get low, it's either like in a dance floor room, which I would say that I think sometimes exercising could maybe make you feel more high or to get low as in like backstabby to feel more high. So then it's like a triple thing. Like you're feeling high also in that you have lowered somebody else um, by making them feel bad. So interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I hate this character. <laughs> He calls out people and he's like, you know, your friends are not friends. They pretend. I don't know if a conversation, if you could ever tell somebody that their friends are not like really their friends. Because really, how can you know from an outsider? I mean, I definitely, I remember when my gay best friend in high school was, he was like getting new friends because he had just came out. And I kind of just felt like people were just being friends with him because he was gay. And... I like poorly expressed that. Obviously I was like a 16 year old and there was not a lot of vocabulary, especially in my area about the LBGTQ plus community. And yeah, so my bad Kyle, um, that I, I was not as eloquent as I wanted to be, but you know, it's just hard to like not say that and feel like you're coming off jealous, even though sometimes you, I think, are accurate in your assessment. Like, I wasn't jealous. Of course, I wanted my best friend to have more friends. Like, I've never been a person who's like, I only want them to be friends. Like, even if they were going to be less time with me because they found a friend that fits better, it's just like, that's on me, right? That's on me not being an invaluable asset, which I have learned that I am not. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm going to continue living my life anyway. So he helps with his daughter's wedding. I couldn't tell, I guess, if his daughter was 16 or 22. He insists that his, that she's marrying a limp dick. Yes, this man is a father, which is also why I hate him. Maybe too close. This is honestly probably how my dad lives, you know? I think Snoop Dogg is in this film. I always love a good Snoop Dogg being in a film. I love Snoop Dogg, honestly. That's the only thing my dad and I have in common. I think they play Bad Moon Rising. I wrote Bad Moon Rising. Um, I just love that phrase, even though it has the word bad in it. And I try not to like negative words uh, as in some weird holistic, like positive mind cleanse. They push a tuba guy in, which makes me feel really bad and also scares me because is the tuba gonna sink to like the bottom? Like, is he going to drown with the tuba? That's like a very embarrassing death to me. He has a Spanish mama that takes care of him. I don't know. I mean, that's what I wrote in the note. I'm pretty sure the movie says that. Sorry if it's racist. It's not, I'm not intending to be. There's a beautiful shot of the kimono flowing in the wind. I just love to wear my kimonos in the wind, you know? I don't think I even have a kimono. Is having a kimono racist? I have no idea anymore. I feel like the jury was mixed when I last researched that. He falls out of fr at his fridge because he's like just like messed up all the time. Like messed up on drugs and and Z alcohol. And he's like super rich. I think they call him Moondog. I feel like abusers always have ridiculous names. Here are some of my abusers' ridiculous names. Ski Dog. 
moose, Sasquatch, right? They're always ridiculous and they're like weirdly animalistic. And why? Like, did they give themselves that name? Did somebody else call them that name? Like, why are they insisting another name? Just get another name or change your name. Commit. Change your name to Moondog. Change your name to Sasquatch. Change your name to Ski Dog. If you don't like your other name, like, commit. I see it. You can commit to hitting my mom. Why can't you commit to changing your name? I'm so sorry. This was so dark, but a great joke. So he's smoking between his toes. I have pretty dexterous. Is that a word, maybe? I have, like, feet that can pick up stuff, like a little monkey. So it would be interesting. I don't think I would ever want to smoke with my toe, though, because I am very afraid of, like, burns. So... I thought this girl was Amy Adams, but she's not Amy Adams, but she looks like Amy Adams. That's his wife that he makes orgasm. I think he writes books. He might be a writer. I think that's what he does because he's got like a typewriter. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. I watched this film years ago, so this is a recall. This is why I need to be better at doing films, but you know, life is life and uh, I need to get paid more on YouTube. So take this moment to subscribe and put a notification bell. Videos are going to get better. And I think they're already pretty decent. I've definitely seen worse. So anyway, he hasn't written a new good book, but he's making his wife orgasm. So, you know, you can only do the best that you can do. His wife is like, you know, you cannot be late, but he's like, you know, I got a lot of living to do. And so people are kind of saying that he's a has-been. I think he is. But he feels like he's a radical and that, you know, words mean something. I think that his wife is rich. They might be rich together. This pretty much seems like he's homeless. So I don't understand. This movie is very sexual. So if you are triggered by that, maybe stand away. He wasn't in a ceremony, but I don't think anybody was too upset about it. He didn't know this one person was changing and he's kind of used to mis mix signals. He kind of misreads things all the time. Uh, I didn't like Jonah Hill in this thing. I, Jonah Hill is a very hard person for me to like. I think, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Apparently his sister Beanie is very nice. My boyfriend met her at his restaurant job. And she was very sweet, as well as Ben Platt, surprisingly. But I also heard that they were very mean in middle school. So it just all depends on, you know, who you ask. But yeah, I, I didn't love him in this. But I also usually... Jonah Hill is just, like, also good at, like, being hateable. And I respect that. Uh, he loves a hibiscus flower. So do I. Hibiscus flowers are so underappreciated. Yeah, there's a lot of great things going on in this movie. They've got leopard, volcano, organic underwear. What an image, you know? I think I also have leopard underwear. Comment below if you have leopard underwear. Let's unite. Let's form a club. They fuck in the kitchen. Seems very dangerous. I'd always be worried about accidentally turning on the stove. Another person is finishing a yoga class. I think he like has multiple affairs on his wife, but also his wife is cheating, so it's fine. They race in the car. Their grandma is in a wheelchair. And he is like, oh, that's not my mom that I know of. And... He has his penis grabbed in front of everyone. Bold move. Been a while since I've seen somebody publicly grab a penis. I don't think I've ever actually seen somebody publicly grab a penis. Would be quite a sight. He hugs his daughter around the neck, which was a big red flag for me. But his daughter gets ordained and married by Snoop Dogg, which is kind of now a secret dream of mine. Mr. Beach Bum, Matthew McConaughey, he believes, you know, that things are from, that he's from just another dimension. Kind of love that. And he encourages people to, you know, be careful, but go where you've never gone before. You know, life doesn't come with seatbelts um, unless you buy a car that comes with seatbelts or you buy a seatbelt and you wear it around yourself. He makes his daughter's husband limp dick accept that. He says that Lunderway is a wonderful lover. I have not had an experience with her, so I cannot verify, but that is just the hearsay. Very filthy movie. They say things like slide in, ride in, you know. Uh, Spring Breakers is kind of filthy. These movies are all very sexual, but also I would say that, like, Florida has some sexual energy. Like, you are going to see parts of old people you were not ready to see when you go to Florida. And that's just like part of it. But how like undeniably sexy is that to say like radically in age that it's like, this is it. And it's untoned and it's there. And there's just something like raw in that. Not that I'm like fetishizing oldies. I prefer somebody five years older than me. Uh, and his name is Luke Scorcho and we are moving in together. Um, congratulations. I'm very happy. Thank you. There's moments of this movie where it's very purple, but I love it. It's that like beautiful neon purple. Oh, it's so nice. And they have some marijuana and there's some pink fluorescence. It's pretty nice. He's just hitting a bong at his daughter's wedding, you know, more power to him. There's beautiful ocean water. There's like a song that like makes him weep. And Snoop Dogg is moved by that. 
This movie has some real wild shit. I just love Snoop Dogg, though, honestly. I don't know why. He's just so likable, right? He's probably done wrong things and, you know, he's human, but I don't know. I like him. I trust him and I forgive him if he's done any wrong things. He plagiarizes something and he wins. I hate him, by the way. I hate the beach bum. And he's just having a great day. There's fireworks. He's wearing sunglasses at night. More reasons to hate him. Although that's a great 80s song. He swims with his joint in the mouth. That seems super dangerous. Like one in the fact that the joint would go out in the water and the other one like, would you choke? And also wouldn't you feel sad if like waves come up and like take the joint away? Anyway, give it up for this beautiful job that the colorist has done. It's incredible. He hugs his daughter when he's all wet. The worst, but he dances with her sweet. So we'll forgive him, we'll pardon. And he's just like laughing on the street. He's a crazy dude. He, it's like kind of this thing of like almost misjudging the homeless person of like being like, oh, this guy's life might be so sad. And like really like the homeless person's life is like radical and fun and free. He will go up to strangers and, and talk to him like he knows them. He likes to make out with other people's significant other. Yeesh. I think his wife is called Minnie, Minnie Boo Boo. I wrote that down, so... I have no idea what the context. I could look it up on Google, but maybe it's more fun if I try to remember this film from three years ago, because that's kind of says the impact of the film and gives you some clarity onto this review. He has stunning laughs, and sometimes he kind of seems a bit insincere with strangers. It could just be that he's so high. I feel like sometimes with some people, I haven't really had this as much. I will say that, like, when I use marijuana... And I, I do find like my social anxiety is easier to deal with because I think my brain is like mellowed out because my, I constantly think like so many thoughts. I think you can tell when I'm speaking sometimes I talk really fast and that is literally because my brain is like going at 90 miles per hour. But yeah, I, I think he's just like, I think it's that thing that happens when you're not sober and like some people just become like way more outgoing and they like talk to strangers, but it's not very sincere or like present because they have left their body sort of or I don't know who's driving it's sometimes that scares me I'm not I haven't really had that reaction with alcohol too much and when I have I'm very conscious of it and I often see people who have that reaction it doesn't feel like they realize and I don't know maybe I just have like a super cool brain I don't know what it is anyway he's driving and he grabs a beer illegal but also reason to hate him uh he makes out with people on his anniversary just a lot of fucking and smoking in this movie. And he says, you know, to do all there is is to fire when it goes up in flames. Uh, he dances on a dock. This is filmed super interestingly. Like, this is a great visual movie. I think sometimes movies can be very boring and formulaic and people don't take risks with cinematography. Harmony as a director absolutely does. And it really does encapsulate a lot of Florida moments, particularly like my, I have like, I've only been to Miami once when I was 13 and I have such a vivid experience of Miami and this is this kind of like reminds me of it. There's a lot of odd yet perfect song choices. He's got an EDM backpack. Then his wife ends up being an ambulance. I think she did like a bunch of drugs. He's wearing reflector glasses which I don't like. Yeah his wife ends up dying. Oh and I think his wife and Snoop were having sex but like I understand. Snoop's pretty sad about it. He's got a lime green car which truly reflects the sadness. Uh, I can't imagine having a lime green car. I think like a jeep that was lime green would be pretty cool. Yeah poor daughter like loses her mom right after her wedding. That would be tough because then too then you have like your grief anniversary and it's like woohoo we just celebrated our love. Also now I have to be sad because my mom died. So basically then he has to publish something or he gets nothing. So he consults some tarot cards, also wrote, I think that his daughter was maybe born on a boat or maybe the wife, I don't know who was born on a boat, but would be an interesting birth. And then there's footage about long distance running. I guess he used to maybe be a runner and very good one at that. But anyway, so he has to publish something or he gets nothing and he's got a typewriter too. So it's gonna go extra slow or at least be a very tedious process. He believes that he's probably going to die before his daughter, hopefully, and or he thought that he would die before his wife. But he consults the tarot cards, which say that he will piss away his family fortune unless he writes his book. Um, so then he's just in his underwear, you know, on the typewriter. And he says things like, thank you and fuck you. Sometimes I definitely feel towards my business partner. <laughs> he's got Uggs on his big feet, you know, just 
some great styles in this movie. Absolutely great. Uh, you know, he's a fully dressed man, unarmed. And then the pool he ends up going to is hot, 120. Although I do love a lot hot tub, even when it like burns. I would love to melt in a hot tub. He goes to a gangbang to write his great American novel. He just needs a little bit of a loan for a week or two. And they're like, okay, you can have it, but don't come back until you're ready. Then you got this beautiful yellow blazer, a beautiful view. Be like, oh, are you back so soon, Mr. Beachbum? You know, and he's like, ah, oh, man, I was never gone in the first place. He talks about how getting on a turd makes him, him crazy. Crazy turd. Man is a great man. Oh, gross. I hate the word turd, by the way. Just like, I wish it was never invented, you know? Some words should not have been said. And then he is told that he'll never be great or brilliant or dependable. So nice. And his agent is pretty much mad. He's like waited for ages and no pages. Which, you know, good point. Very solid reason to be mad. But he, you know, Beach Bum's been busy going to strip clubs, which also have great lighting. And he's, you know, trying to get a gig, trying to get some money, I guess. He needs a chiropractor because his back is messed up. And uh, to him, friendship is just like needing something from others, uh, which I think is a lot of friendships, unfortunately. But he's looking for real clients that are up for rewards, but he kind of hangs up, you know, because he's just a magical stoner and is... Thinking of like, you know, maybe going to Jamaica. Thinks that Magnum P.I. is based on his life. Litters beer cans. He's skateboarding and smoking. Like homeless. Getting drunk and staying drunk. He thinks Baudelaire's poetry was a tootless chump. And then and he grunts out another poem. This movie is just a field trip of a group of wackadoos, you know. He plays the recorder. Hangs from a chandelier. Like... <laughs> Like, almost like that Dobby video. Oh, such a good meme. The pillowcase with the feathers are super cool. He's just, like, destroying a house, though. And then he gets arrested because they ask, like, is this his car? And he destroys his own house out of boredom, I guess. So, but, you know, he thinks that he's better than fine. He's just adventuring on. I think he's a Republican, too. Very interesting. And he, like, asks people, you know, when's the last time they laugh? He meets a toothless guy who takes out his dentures. So he could get to prison or rehab, which would be 12 months, 12 days, which he doesn't feel like is a problem. Then he wants to go to Virgin Island, which has an open bar and groin massages. Uh, the massage and me, more like. Some people say that, you know, his writing is crude and reckless. He has like a final beer and he asks people if somebody sells acid and they're like, you know, I used to. And he's like, ah, too bad. And he, you know, it kind of gets reminiscent finally. I think the funeral's hitting him and he's like, you know, your mother loves me. And she said that I... I was brilliant and he thought I was a genius and and you know that's why he would stay and like let her get away with everything and um he really misses her and is ready to go to rehab and he's gonna try and do better he just needs you know a little bit of a nudge to become a changed person and his daughter is definitely like got more of her stuff together you know so he goes to certain prayer where they're all vaping and holding hands it's his third time there and he's repeating and they all you know say you don't have to drink to have fun or do weed cocaine or heroin which is true you don't have to do that to have fun there are many other ways to have fun sober i don't think that is unfortunately said enough but they have one dad who preaches you know huffing pain and breaking down ho houses when no one's home and the kids are upstairs oh yeah zach afron's in this movie <laughs> hi zach how was high school musical it's very funny when disney stars are like i want to do something outrageous from doing something so kid friendly and honestly disney movies aren't that bad most of the time. There's reason Disney has success. Anyway, they think that burning stuff is no big deal. You know, and they want to get out of here. But they're in this just like, you know, fake world with wild fashion and hair. And I think he's kind of shaken up that his wife had died, you know, and thinks that he's going to die in the sands of time. So he's trying to get some blow and some joints to sell. There's no kids, but there's police coming off a golf cart, which is very interesting. I can't imagine being pulled off by a policeman in golf cart, Florida, you know? And he believes that there are love in the air, but he gets pushed into a pool. So, and he he's kind of just like living this life because he believes that Jesus paid for all our sins, so now you can sin all you want. A lot of people, I think, have that interpretation of the Bible. <laughs> anyway, he needs money. And he's hailed as this genius. I don't know that he comes off as a genius in this movie. But I also feel like there are some people who are just called geniuses. 
even though they have never said anything genius in their life. He crushes and shoots his beer, takes a guy on motorbikes. He's still going to strippers in hotels. He types with a balloon. He loves this beautiful drag queen. Yeah, my boyfriend loves this movie, but I don't know. I just have a hard time, you know? He arrives late to his daughter Heather's wedding and he gropes the groom because he's so drunk. I guess it's like different. Like, and I think people see these things and they're like, uh -huh, oh, funny and embarrassing. And then it's like when you've lived with alcoholics, I just like have no patience for it because it's like, yeah, these movies telling, I feel like that this is so funny and embarrassing because it doesn't happen to normal families. Anyway, like, I think when movies show this and they're like, oh, isn't it so funny? Because to, like, normal families, this would never happen. And what, like, a funny thought to think of it happen again. But when it does happen quite often in your family, I don't know, it becomes a little less funny. Because it's just, like, and I feel like the, the alcoholics that do this get, like, encouraged by this kind of movie. Also, I think Snoop Dogg is called Linguiri in this, which is very funny. He swears that a potent strain of cannabis that was made in an isolated pond in Jamaica is responsible for his success. Oh, and the reason his wife died was because she was drunk and driving. Uh, that will kill you. Don't drink and drive. Very, very important to that. Oh yeah, and this is what happened with their estate. Sorry, I just was like, I was a very bad note taker when I first started these, so I'm correcting my things. So let's get us all on the same page. When the mom died, half of Minnie, uh, Isa Fisher, her estate went to Heather, their daughter, and his half was frozen and placed in an escrow account until he finished his novel, which is why it's so important that he gets all of this done. And then he's all mad about it, so he broke and trashed Minnie's mansion. He wanted to avoid prison time, so he agreed to the year of rehabilitation, but he breaks out of the faculty with the pyromaniac named Flicker, who is Zac Afron, because he's so hot, right? Of course he'd be a pyromaniac. Uh, I don't really think that Zac Efron... I know Zac Efron is attractive, but I personally would not want to date Zac Efron. Um, but I would feel very flattered if he was into me. <laughs> anyway, Moondog's basically trying to make his way into back to Miami. And he bumps into his old friend, who my boyfriend loves this so much, uh, Captain Whack, uh, who offers... Moondog an opportunity to co-captain the Dolphin Tours. Oh my god, my boyfriend loves this so much. It's honestly adorable how much he loves Captain Wack. Um, but before we get there, we'll talk about some of his poem. He said, setting sun time comes, I warble under yours, no one else does. Unmitigated admiration. So there is something. He, he actually, I can see the genius in some of his poetry, but you would not know it talking to him. I'm gonna tell you all that. Anyway, they feel like he's having so much fun with this pyromaniac that just the most fun ever, you know, feels like God is on his shoulder, that their dick is shining real bright, you know, they're vaping like crazy, dancing in the rain, having a gay old time, wink, wink. But he wonders how he's going to write with no home. He's got his like little typewriter in a bag. I feel like women are objects in this movie, which is part of the reason I don't like it because there isn't really very like, I guess the daughter is a pretty developed like normal person female but she's like barely into this because she's kind of barely even a priority on moondog's mind but anyway they bought a second boat and they name it success this is all captain whack the part my boyfriend just loves like he just dies at this party thinks it's so funny and it is very funny it's a very good thing but anyway they're going to tour and look at dolphins they've only had four deaths in eight years i don't know what the statistics are on dolphins tours maybe that's a low statistic or a high statistic probably seems like an inside florida drope he's got his license stripped old captain whack on five occasions just on technical stuff no big deal he loves dolphins but he can't catch a squid octopus he's got kind of a janky truck and a loaded gun and he killed a lot of dolphins with his gun and he's got a, a parrot that is addicted to cocaine, who is high all the time. That would be an interesting thing. Your bird has a drug problem. A pet even having a drug problem would be would be a lot. A lot to deal with, in my opinion. I already have Marseille as a peeing problem, and it's, it's too much. Anyway, he's like, you know, he's trying to sell Moondog on helping him out, you know, his dolphin tours for Captain Mac. That's his bread and butter. Everything still works. He takes things very seriously you know and moondog's like he just wants to see dolphins and he's like you know what i got lots of dolphins for you today this is a movie for a poet a little bit kind of an edgy poet i can see poets like in this movie he talks about having a corkscrew pecker i think dolphins 
which is terrifying to think about. I don't like to think about animals' genitalia, which is probably the reason why I did never go super hard into animal care because uh, that is a big part of it. Anyway, it's orgy season. Everybody is having sex, and he's just ready to to dive in and, and see the dolphins doing stuff. It turns out that these these dolphins are uh, great white sharks, and he's begging them. You know, he doesn't want them to hurt him he wants to love them this man is a weird dude he's you know but his name's captain wax so what did you expect anyway the the sharks attack him and sever his foot seedweed is an aphrodisiac if you didn't know but the water is beautiful <laughs> people are impressed they laugh and you know captain wax takes it in stride he's like it's fine you know it's a flesh food he's gonna be dancing in no time they're trading foots for hat which is so gross he just wanted the captain hat you know which I mean can't you buy it on Amazon I don't know if Amazon exists in this world not that you should support Amazon but you know it's there it would be a way to get a captain hat I feel like you can buy a captain hat like Disney too anyway Jimmy Buffett is in this movie of course he is because it's Florida in all of its beauty they talk about how you know they could cross dress to avoid detection and eventually the police kind of catch up to Linguiris and Mr. Snoop Dogg which makes Moondog flee to Key West with the Jamaican weed you know priorities yeah this movie is super hypersexual I mean and they literally say a line where they're like you tiny hands make my cock look big which is something men man I can't so I'm saying I think when you have a penis you just become like a little terrible I don't know what it is so he starts dressing like a geisha, essentially, to escape. I don't know if that's racism or not, but, you know, it is a little genius. I think that that is probably one way. I mean, when you twist your gender, that's uh, people don't know what to do about it. There's a lot of speedos with lots of butt. I always wonder if things are butt doubles. Anyway, somehow Moondog pulls a Pulitzer poem out of his ass. This is what it takes. So there's hope for everybody. Just, like, be a shit turd in Florida and you will write so high on weed, you know, you'll be, you'll be fine. Anyway, so he protects the weed because he knows that, you know, they'll meet again on some distant shore. The blunt is ridiculously fat, I must say. He makes out with his Cuban maid. He's doing yoga headstands. He writes things like, uncover the abyss written in star. The world is conspiring to make me happy, which I really liked. And he likes to have fun. And I do think that there is something in, like, wanting to have fun that makes your life work out in a certain way, you know, until it doesn't, I guess. So here's Moondog. He's got his boats, his sunshine, his beautiful women, Pulitzer Prize, which will give him his estate and full access to the money. The secret to his Pulitzer Prize, Moondog says, is that he his brain got wired up and hit a frequency and, you know, soupy words came out. You know, it was a good time until it was over. It's wild that the rich can be so horrible to people when they, you know, people just take it. So anyway, he's coming off an acid trip at the Virgin Islands at 3 a.m. You know, he's in bed in a van thinking about his wife peeing. He looks down at his penis with affection, knowing that it has been inside. Oh, I think this is part of his poem about how... He writes a poem basically about how... He looks down at his penis with infection, knowing that it has been inside his wife twice a day, and that makes him feel beautiful. He celebrates dancing and smoking with his daughter, who didn't think he would manage to pull it all off. She dumps the limp dick that she married because he sucked. And he gets his inheritance in cash, and, you know, he's like, hey, don't trust the Illuminati. And he buys a sailboat, which he names Vintage Success. He has $50 million in cash, and I'm praying that this man won't mess it up, but I uh, I know he will, because there's so much weed involved, and he is but a stupid fellow. And he just, he's lighting fireworks, celebrating his wealth, and he lit the fireworks because he lit the money on fire. He survives, and the crowd is going wild for the raining money, which would be pretty crazy. And I was very worried that the kitty was going to die, but it was fine. It, they escaped in the boat. He was a little ashy kitty, but uh... I'd hoped that the man had died and the cat survived. That did not happen, but he survived and all the people laugh and, and that's Beach Bum. Uh, as much as I hate the character because I hate toxic men, 
and was so frustrated with them having an audience and being applauded and getting rich and having a Pulitzer. I will say, this is a very good movie. I mean, Harmony is a great director. He's been critically acclaimed. And there's something very unique about him, and he has his own style, and I, I appreciate that. So, hey, what did you think about Beach Bum? Would you watch this movie? What do you think, you know? Let me know in the comments and please make sure that you subscribe. Everything helps. You're helping out somebody who is half blind and disabled. I would like to not be a burden on my parents forever and perhaps maybe even be this rich. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any other questions and how I can do better. I'll even take hater comments. Uh, hey, every opinion counts. Let me know. Have a good one.